In this video, we're going to take a look at the jit.fiz.multiple object. This object allows you to manage multiple rigid body instances by setting parameters with jitter matrices, similar to the jit.gl multiple object. To use jit.fiz.multiple, we provide a list of parameters we want to control with matrices to the fizzparams attribute. In this case, we will be providing matrices for the position, scale, and force attributes. Okay, let's send it some matrices. I'm going to start with the position matrix. The size of the position matrix will determine the number of rigid body instances for this fizz.multiple object. It also determines the initial x, y, z positions of each instance. So we'll send it a three-plane float32 matrix. The dimensions and dimension sizes can be anything but we can easily space the bodies evenly along the three x, y, z axes if we make the position matrix three dimensions. We can then create a simple expression using the jit.expr and the snorm operator. After sending in our 8 by 8 by 8 position matrix, the fizz.multiple adds 512 bodies to the physics world. These bodies are all crammed into the world and colliding with each other, so the first thing we should do is scale them down by sending in a matrix to the scale parameter. We are going to have uniform scaling across all the bodies, so we can simply send in a one cell matrix and set the three planes of that matrix to 0 0.4 using a message box. Alright, that looks much better. Now let's create some OpenGL shapes for our rigid bodies. JIT.FIZ.MULTIPLE outputs a position matrix and rotation matrix that contain the rigid body's current transforms. We can connect these to the inlets of a JITGL multiple object to easily visualize our bodies. We also want to send the exact same scale matrix to the JITGL multiple that we sent to our FIZ.MULTIPLE so that the OpenGL objects match the scaling of the physics bodies. And lastly, let's send in a color matrix so that we can see these uh, simply using jit.noise. And we're going to apply a material to our grid shape to give them nice lighting and shading. Okay, next we need to adjust the fizz.world world, world box scale attribute so our bodies have some room to move around. However, when we increase the world bounds, uh, the JITGL handle object that we were using to manipulate our view becomes less useful as a tool for doing this. Fortunately, we can create a JITGL camera object and easily animate it using a JIT.anim.drive object. The camera has tripod mode enabled, simulating a camera mounted on a tripod and preventing the uh, Dutch angle effect as we animate the view. UI Listen is enabled on the JIT Anim Drive, telling it to listen to the mouse and keyboard events from the window to animate the attached camera. By default, mouse events will pan and tilt the camera, and there are specific keys to adjust the camera position. And lastly, let's provide some initial values for the force parameter of Fizz.Multiple. We will be using this parameter later in the video, so for now, let's set all force values to zero. Now that our physics and OpenGL objects are set up, let's create a basic synthesizer that is controlled by the rigid bodies. I'm going to use the OSC bank object because it's sort of like a JIT multiple object for MSP oscillators. The arguments to OSC bank specify the number of oscillator voices and some smoothing parameters. I want one voice for each body, so 8 times 8 times 8 equals 512 total voices. OSC Bank takes a list of frequency amplitude pairs to control each of its voices. So we're going to iterate the fizz.multiple position output matrix to create that list. For this basic example, I'm going to create a frequency value from the position matrix cell address. Remember, the position matrix is an 8 by 8 by 8 matrix, but I'm only going to look at the first two values of the cell address the row and column values, and we're going to ignore that last value. I want to transform the row and column values into a number that goes from 0 to 63. So I'm going to multiply the column value by the row size, which is 8, and add that to the row value. Next I'm going to add it to a base frequency value. We now have 64 unique frequencies for our instances. Next we want to generate some amplitude values, so let's just use the Y position of the bodies for that. I'm going to set the world bounds to 10 units along the Y axis. This means rigid bodies are bounded from negative 10 to 10 along the Y axis, and since our rigid body is a sphere with a radius of 0.4 units, 
its y position value will be negative 9.6 when it's resting on the world floor. So I'm going to use a scale object to transform negative 9.6 to 0. Now that we have our frequency values generated from the position matrix cell coordinates and our amplitude values from the y position, we need to combine these values into a list for the OSBank object. OSBank expects a list of frequency amplitude pairs. So first combine the amplitude with the frequency and next we need to rotate the list so its frequency is followed by the amplitude. And then we're going to group each of those frequency amplitude pairs into a list of 1024 elements, which are the 512 frequency values combined with the 512 amplitude values. Lastly, we're going to send this list to the OSBank object as arguments to the set message. Once we turn up the audio and knock the balls to the floor, our synth is ready to play. I can pick up a ball with the mouse and hear its oscillator. If I remove gravity, I can listen to multiple voices simultaneously. Adding back the gravity pulls the balls down to the floor and silences their oscillators. Adjusting the gravity attribute will adjust the oscillator envelope. For the final addition to our synth, it might be nice to enable oscillator voices programmatically, rather than using the mouse. So let's use our final fizz.multiple matrix parameter, the rigid body force. We simply want to set the y component of the force vector to some positive value, causing the rigid body to raise off the floor. I'm just going to use some random number generators to pick which instance gets affected and send those to a pack object, which will create the necessary arguments for the set cell message to the force matrix. So every time we send in a bang, we want to first set the previous instance y force value back to zero, randomly pick a new instance, and set its y force value to some positive number. 20 in this case. Prepend these arguments with the set cell message and send it to the force matrix. We also have to send in bangs to the matrix so it'll output. To test, let's set the gravity to zero and manually send some bangs. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to re-enable the gravity. and I'm going to set this so that it sends a bang every 500 milliseconds. And there you have it. 512 oscillators controlled by rigid bodies.